the other banks, then they, when it comes back to the, uh, the the clearinghouse at night, the Bank of Montreal may have to pay out a lot of uh, a lot of cash. So um, it, it, at the same time, it wants to keep them small because uh, cash is a lousy form of financial paper; it doesn't pay any any interest. So it's a numbers game for uh, the Bank of Montreal. It has to sort of look at the number of credit cards issued, the credit card limits, the number of checking accounts it's got, the amount in each checking account, because that's the largest size check it could, uh, a person could write, uh, lines of credit and so on. And then it, it does a calculation. Another way to view this, this question, very similar in a way, is to think of an ATM machine is that uh, across Canada, the Bank of Montreal has several thousand of these things. And uh, obviously the, the bank would, BMO would prefer to keep cash low the money just sitting in the in the in the machine is not something valuable for the bank of Montreal. It's lousy financial paper. On the other hand, it wants to keep its customers happy, so that when they go to a machine, uh, usually it doesn't say the machine won't say that it has no money. It usually says it's closed for technical reasons. But that makes customers unhappy. So it's the same similar kind of problem for the bank of Montreal. It has to do a calculation of these two things. So let's say for just as an example, imagine there's somebody working at the bank of Montreal. And uh, some, somebody very good with statistics done a c calculation, looked over the last 30 years in the past, and discovered that the Bank of Montreal has $50 million excess cash reserves. This is money that's just never needed in the in the in the clearinghouse or the, in ATM machines. I mean, you say that this money just it's not necessary. So what what could the Bank of Montreal do if it had $50 million excess cash that it doesn't require for the reserves? Well, well there's four possibilities. Let's take a look at them. Uh, one of the possibilities, well, if you look across Canada, almost all the tall buildings are uh, bank building. So the Bank of Montreal could use the money and build a building. Why would the bank do this? Uh, well, they need office space to some degree, but mostly not for uh, themselves, but they could rent it out. That would be uh, revenue for the uh, the shareholders of the Bank of Montreal. They'd be happy because uh, they'd be getting something instead of money just sitting there not doing anything. Um, another possibility would be to uh, send letters to their customers and say, we really like you and you're a wonderful person, and they could raise the credit card limit. So uh, they'd say to people, hey, you want to use your credit card? Go ahead and do it. Keep in mind, uh, Another possibility is if you apply for a credit card that, 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 that moment, the Bank of Montreal might say, yes, sure, we'll approve your credit card uh, application. Keep in mind that the bank is not, the BMO is not worried about this because now these uh, the extra use of the credit cards means that when those bits of paper come back to the bank, uh, uh, BMO at, 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 the, uh, at the clearinghouse at 10 or 11 o'clock at night, uh, the BMO has sufficient cash reserves in case the other, they have to pay cash out to the other banks. Now, another possibility would be to lower mortgage interest rates. Uh, how does a bank, in effect, lend money? Well, if you apply for a mortgage, this would be somebody that wants to buy a new house. Uh, uh, you go in, you make an application. And what the Bank of Montreal does merely is add a few zeros to your bank account, to your checking account, which means now you can write a check for the extra 10, 20,000, whatever it is you're asking for. And once again, the Bank of Montreal is not worried about uh, uh, about you writing such a large check because it has the cash reserves in the event it has to pay out to the other banks in the event that the check is cashed at a, at a different bank. So the effect of this now, of course, is by lowering the mortgage interest rates, they're encouraging people maybe to take out a mortgage and then a new house will get built. Uh, fourth possibility, and, and there's many, of course, there's many more than just four, but let's consider these four. These are, these are some of the main ones. Um, the, there's another type of financial paper. We've seen it already. It's a, sometimes called a treasury bill or a T bill. It's a type of government bond. And the government, could, the Bank of Montreal could simply buy these. The, the bond, the advantage of the bond is it pays an interest as opposed to cash, which doesn't. So if the, um, I want to take a quick glance at what this means in practice. What happens if the, uh, if they build a building? Well, the aggregate demand curve, uh, the investment would increase. If, uh, if they approve credit card, well, then consumption would go up. Uh, if they lowered mortgage interest rates, people took out more mortgages, housing construction, new house construction is considered part of investment. Uh, in the case of the government bonds, it's similar, but uh, I want to take a quick glance at this, this specific case. Uh, as I said before, a bond is an IOU. It's issued by the, uh, the son is called the T-bill, issued by the, uh, the government, the federal government. And it's typically, this is the example I'm looking at here, it's called a pure discount bond. Uh, it promises to pay next year $100. And you can buy it now. In the event that uh, it's a low price, you pay $90 now, you wait a year, you get a return of $10. If you pay a lower price, $70, uh, then you wait a year and you make $30. So the simple rule here is that the lower the price, the higher the return. Uh, 
So what happens if the Bank of Montreal starts buying these bonds? Well, if they buy bonds, that would push the demand curve for bonds to the right. And as a result, bond prices would go up a little bit, which means that the interest rate on bonds would go down. And so if you c c compare this uh, fourth possibility with the other three, in all cases, interest rates would be a little bit lower, and this would encourage project, various projects or more investments in the economy. So step back now from this possibility. Let's consider uh, uh, expansionary monetary policy. Keep in mind, monetary policy is conducted by the Bank of Canada. First step, it's in three steps. The first step is the governor would give a speech. The governor of the Bank of Canada gives a speech, and in the speech, uh, we've only had men as, a, we've never had a woman as a governor, so he would say, I'm worried about employment. That's the first tip off, first indication that the, the, the Bank of Canada is going to be pursuing uh, an expansionary monetary policy. To make it very, very clear what the bank is doing, though, the second step is they have a number, sometimes called the key lending rate, bank rate, target rate. Um, it's like a scale from zero to ten, if you will. They will uh, lower this this number. Uh, this makes it absolutely clear that the, uh, the, the bank is going to be pursuing a, a monetary policy. There's no confusion about the speech. The third step is the bank can print up new money. That's the responsibility of the bank to print cash, and it can deposit this cash in all of the chartered banks. In fact, any financial institution, part of the role of the Bank of Canada is to uh, manage the deposits of the federal government. And the federal government, like any other, any other person or entity, has various accounts in all the banks. These are managed by the Bank of Canada, so very simple for the Bank of Canada to print the money put it into one of these guarded trucks, send it off to the uh, the Bank of Montreal, for example, and now the Bank of Montreal, in effect, has excess cash reserves. So all of the previous, those different steps we examined will take place. Uh, the AD curve will shift to the right. Uh, in fact, it, it, it's a bit, this is, these steps are pursued exactly like this, but it's a bit like the example of uh, Pavlov's dog, I think, in, in psychology, where the bell rings and then the dogs immediately start salivating. Well, in a sense that once the governor gives a speech, the rest of this happens automatically because people know, and the, the bank has a very good reputation, that it will pursue what it's saying it's going to do. So the, the Bank of Montreal, CIBC, and so on, immediately start taking steps as soon as the governor gives the speech. Uh, now, what about the opposite type of monetary policy, which is either restrictive or contractionary? Uh, well, it's the same, but everything in reverse. So uh, we'll take a, a, a glance at three steps. In this case, the governor would give a speech, and in the speech, he'd say something like, I'm worried about inflation. Uh, and this means it's a tip off that we're going to be, he's going to be shortly applying a restrictive or contractionary monetary policy. Step two, in this case, uh, the bank would raise the key lending rate or something called the bank rate, disc rate, target rate. This makes it very, very clear. And I have to say that the restrictive or contractionary monetary policy is a little bit more difficult to apply than the, uh, the, the expansionary. Step three, now it's the same situation. The trucks show up empty. Uh, they go to the different chartered banks. They, uh, they can withdraw cash now. Now, it means the Bank of Montreal has insufficient cash reserves. Uh, what does the Bank of Canada do when the cash comes back to the bank? It just burns it. Well, burns it. I don't know. I think they probably chop it up and maybe use it for recycling. But the uh, 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 keep in mind that the Bank of Canada can print this money whenever it wants to because it's, it's own, it, it has issued, in effect, the financial paper. In this case, now, the BMO has insufficient cash reserves. So what is it going to do? Well, let's run through the four possibilities again. Uh, one possibility is it could cancel the building project. That means to say if it had planned to purchase or buy a new building or uh, approve a construction project, it now it doesn't have the $50 million, so it will cancel it. And one of the consequences is investment will be lower than it would otherwise have been, and the aggregate demand curve shifts to the left. Second possibility would be if you applied for a credit card that that uh, that day when this happened, they probably, or they might say no. It's unlikely that they would lower credit limits, but they might just leave them unchanged. They won't mail letters to their customers and say that you're a value, to, 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 to encourage people to use their credit cards. Um, uh, 
they're doing this because, of course, they're, they don't want to have more credit card slips or checks coming back to them. Uh, banks generally don't like to refuse people. So an easier way to handle this is just simply to raise the mortgage interest rates. So that means to say people might look at the possibility of borrowing money to build, buy a new house, and uh, they would say, well, the monthly payments are going to be a little bit too high, so they decide to wait maybe another year or two years before uh, before borrowing the money. Again, the reason the Bank of Montreal would do this is that people would not be writing a check so that the check wouldn't come back to them later at 11 o'clock because they won't have sufficient cash reserves. Of course, another possibility is easier is that you sell their treasury bills that they've got. The Bank of Montreal always has a stock of treasury bills. They could just sell them in the market. Of course, if they did that, the price, this would shift, if you will, the supply curve would shift to the right. There'd be more treasury bills available and the price of treasuries of these bonds would go down, which means the interest rate on bonds would go up, which corresponds with what the other, other, the other possibilities. As a result, investment would be lower. And the term we sometimes say for this is money is tight. So a, a restrictive or contractionary monetary policy is sometimes referred to as a tight monetary policy.